Glory to God Everyone's sitting on this side, except for <laughs> welcome you all out this morning on this beautiful Lord's Day. The sun is shining, we don't have rain. That's a good thing this morning. Uh, I'd like to see the beauty of the day out there. As we go into our uh, prayer time, are there any prayer requests that may not have been mentioned during Sunday school time? Grace family. Any others? Okay, shall we go to prayer this time then? Dear God in heaven, we come before you today. We just want to thank you and praise you. Dear Lord, it is a privilege to be in your house, dear Lord. We thank you for giving us this sanctuary that we can come into, that we can Worship and praise you. Dear God, the glory, be God be the glory through this morning. We thank you for your awesomeness. We thank you for your love. We thank you, dear Lord, for all that you have done for us, but especially for dying on the cross. Dear Lord, as we studied about how sin entered into this world, and yet, dear Lord, even before that, you had prepared the way to redeem us. Your love for us is so great. We thank you for that. We pray this morning that you would be with the different ones. We think of the Grace family. We pray that you would just give them comfort this morning, that you would draw close to them, be with Dave and the children. Um, just lift them up to you this morning and ask that you would just wrap your arms of love around them and allow them to know that you're there. We thank you that, great, uh, that Robin has made that trip is now with you and we just glory in that dear lord even though we miss her we know that she is in a far better place and so we just give her into your arms we just ask that you would continue to be with carl kirkman we think of him this morning we thank you dear lord for bringing him through this accident and that he is improving every day we just ask that you would be with him lift him up and continue to heal him dear lord strengthen his body and return him to normal full help. We pray, dear Lord, that you would continue to be with those who Tony has prayed for. Dear Lord, we expect that we will see healings. We have seen healings, and we thank you for that. We thank you that Bill's back is uh, feeling good now. And we give you the praise for that. We just praise you for all that you do. Dear Lord, as we uh, serve you, we just pray that you would allow us to witnesses to this community here Lord, you have placed us here for this time in this area and so we pray that we as a church would go forth and that we would proclaim your word across this community and that may see many souls saved for you help us dear lord to see the hurting around us help us to take time to pray for them help us to take time to share share with them that we care for them we pray that you would continue to be with us Guide us and direct us in the remainder of this service. We pray you could be with us this evening. As we come together, we pray that uh, there would be many people that would come out to hear Tony this evening. We just pray that you would give Tony the message that you would have for us and bless him in a mighty way. We give you all the praise and the glory and the honor, for we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. We've got somebody coming here now. Donna, great. Okay, we uh, lost my place here. For announcements this morning, of course, we have the evening service coming up. 
Um, looking forward to what Tony has for us this morning. We look forward to what he has for us this evening. And so just invite your friends out this evening, 7 o'clock. We also have Fall Senior Day, which is coming up at Roxbury Holiness Camp from 9.30 to 2.30. And they feature in concert the Isabel family. And that'll be on October 9th. Bill will be going if you uh, want to go. Uh, talk to Bill and I'll make arrangements there. Also on October 20th, we have the Men with Vision uh, dinner meeting. Do we have anything further on that yet? Okay, more information will come on that. Okay, are there any other announcements that I may have missed? Morning, Donna. <laughs> okay, if not, I'll ask the usher to come up with Donna. Dear God in heaven, we come before you this morning. We thank you for the many blessings that you have given to us. Dear Lord, as we give back, just a small portion of what you have given to us. We pray that you would take it, multiply it, and use it for your kingdom. We'll give you the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. verse and following that Tony will be sharing with us this morning um, it's been great having Tony with us uh, last two evenings have been great and just look forward to what he has for us this morning Tony comes from us to us from Virginia uh, he is an atheist at ALS he's healed of ALS the Lord has blessed him and it's using him greatly for his ministry, especially in healing. So we look forward to what he has this morning. Thank you. Okay, 262, first and last verse. Jesus. 
Praise the Lord. He is so good to us. Now, we had, we had a wonderful Bible study. That, that was awesome Sunday school. And I want to put this thought in your head. Now, we were talking about Adam and Eve in the garden. And um, we, we see where the Lord God gives everything that's going to happen because they are the fruit, right? So now we got all the thorns, all the bristles, all that stuff. The world's corrupted. And he's going down the list telling Adam, because you ate of the fruit, this, this, this is all going to happen. Which, I personally, it's like a parent. When a child does something wrong, the parent doesn't want to punish the child. And that is what the point was. The point was because they are the fruit the physical senses start controlling us so now here's the consequences that's all in adam some food for thought who are we in now post resurrection we are in christ We can still be in Adam if we want to. <laughs> we can still be in Adam, but now we're in Christ. So now we've got the Holy Spirit in us. Jesus is sitting on the throne of David as a man. His spirit is within us. So when we're speaking the mind of Christ, we're speaking life the mind of adam is death and so now we're no longer in adam we're in christ so now we can speak god's will which is always life and see more and more amazing things happen paul stated that we know not what we look like, except that we shall see Christ as he truly is. It's my personal belief we are growing and maturing to that point. That is what this journey is until we all reach the full stature of Christ, which is all united in the body of Christ. There are more healings more wonderful things of God happening now than never before. It would, it truly will rival the book of Acts. All over the world, there are people rising up and speaking life. And then it's happening more and more and more. Yesterday, I went to, where did I go, Bill? Lewis, Lewis, Lewis Town. Okay. I went to Lewis Town, and I got to pray over a woman with Lou Gehrig's disease. Well, her daughter, which is the one that I knew from Facebook, hey, Nina, if you're watching, um, her daughter didn't tell me that she had sciatica, and she didn't tell me nothing. You know, Tony, can you pray over me? Nah, that don't happen. So the Holy Spirit told me, and it was a lot of times I get it to where I feel it in my body. I know it's not mine. And so I was like, at first I thought it was her mother, Jackie. And so I said, Jackie, you have pain right here right now. And she was like, no. I'm like, okay. Then all of a sudden I look over, it was Nina. 
and I know she wouldn't mind me telling this. And I'm like, the Holy Spirit done told on you. And so she starts bending down, and she's healed. And that's the way. My whole ministry is outside the four walls for a reason. Not because I don't like us church folks, but because we need to take Christ outside and start speaking blessings out there. Then that will happen. Because especially with his Holy Spirit inside of us, it's his will. Life is always his will. So when it comes out of us, it changes atmospheres. I've been, have you ever been in a store, a gas station, where atmosphere is like, you know somebody got chewed out? You know the owner of the establishment was upset at the worker? Oftentimes, before I enter, I'd be like, okay, Holy Spirit, let me just let you change the atmosphere. Let me forget about myself, my own troubles, my own worries, and you just change this place. And when we do that, the mood changes that quick. We are world influencers. I want, I want to show you something here. And I really didn't know what direction I was going to go. I never know what direction I'm going to go. But now, back in the Old Covenant days, fasting, fasting, fasting. It was a big show. And in Isaiah 58, You've got God kind of myth about it. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice and they take delight in approaching God. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not. Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takes no knowledge. Behold, in the day of your fast ye find pleasure, and exact all your labors. Behold, ye fast for strife, and debate, and to smite the fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as the ye do this day to make your voice be heard on high. Now this is the part I want us all to get. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? Is that the way God wants us to fast? A day for man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will thou call this a fast, as in an acceptable day to the Lord? Hmm. So, giving things up for God. Is that what he wants? In 58.6. Is this not the fast? that I have chosen, check this out, to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor, they are cast out to thy house. When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh, then shall the light break forth as the morning, and thy help shall spring forward speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. 
the glory of the Lord. Thou shalt be rewarded. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. And thou shalt cry, and he shall hear. Here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speaking vanity. Here's my point. That should sound vaguely familiar. Because when the Lord was resurrected, what did he do, tell the disciples? Go now ye into all the nations. Raise the sick. Raise the sick. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Preach the gospel to the poor. What is the fast? The fast is breaking the chains of people. The fast, not only feeding them, not only seeing them healed, seeing their addictions fly off. True freedom. The Lord doesn't necessarily want us to give things up for him. He wants us to give him out. To set people free. Chains broken. I had a dream last night. Kind of surprised me. I'm fixing to go somewhere I don't ever go. Um, and I honestly, I don't ever know of a sermon I've ever preached this on. I had a dream last night. In that dream, I kept hearing the word invisible, invisible. And 3.33, the Lord always speaks threes to me. When I was healed, I said everything three times. <laughs> it seems like there's been word curses. And what I saw was three ladies, and they don't attend this church. In fact, I, they don't attend any church that I know of. <clears throat> and this dream was about these three ladies. Don't know them, haven't seen them, I know of. These ladies teach wake up which is witchcraft. And that's in this area, according to my dream. This area seems so peaceful. Yet, I kept hearing invisible, invisible. So, I was asking the Lord this morning, what's going on with this? <laughs> We've got the Holy Spirit, so... I know the Holy Spirit in me is active, so I don't worry about witchcraft per se, because I know Holy Spirit is active. <clears throat> That's why this is so unusual for me, because I don't worry about that, because, hey, a witch cannot curse me. That is, witchcraft is nothing more than the physical authority that God gave to Adam. That's what witchcraft is. That is because God gave dominion to Adam. They're using that influenced by the demonic. That's the physical authority. We have spiritual authority, which those that were here yesterday, hey, the spiritual authority trumps it. That means we have in Christ, who is the tree of life. Let me throw this in there. My belief, who is the tree of life? Jesus. I think as of the resurrection of Christ, the Garden of Eden, there is no more tree of life. Because now he's in us. And he's sitting on the throne, David. So, 
in this dream. And there's something about which is I actually have a fellow minister. His name's Don Allen Jr. who had an experience with the witch. He's got a book called Seven Days with Witch. And she was converted to Christianity. But she was the high head of four corners, something like that. And this is in Missouri. And so I don't concern myself with that. But what is happening, I feel, and according to this dream, is these witches, they are, they keep speaking and they keep speaking and they keep speaking. Like we should be speaking life. They're continually using word curses. Now, and now I'm going to get to the whole deal. Why am I bringing this up? Because there, there was these witches that were speaking invisibility, I feel, over this skirt. Because you guys are awesome. You have the love of Christ. There's no doubt about it. Bill, <laughs> you have a prophetic tongue, and you love people, and you know people. Pastor, you have such a gentle spirit and such a, such a gentle soul with this small body of people. This community, you're with, you're upholding this community, and I don't even think you know that. And that's why the, these, I say witches, these people have been speaking invisibility. Yesterday, when I was about, I just noticed an air of confusion everywhere but here. And I was at about throughout the day when I came in here, it was peaceful. And that's what we carry with us when we go out these doors. That tendonitis you've been experiencing, Pastor. Let's see your hand. Right now, in Jesus' name, I break all word curses. I break any witchcraft. Jesus. Now, and this ain't ministry time, but maybe it is. <laughs> How do you feel, Pastor? Did the high pitch just suddenly take a nosedive down? <laughs> How are you doing? How's that doing? Thank you, Jesus. I speak life, life, life. And most time, Jesus always combat death with life. And that's why most time I pray the way I do. But because of this dream, and the Lord is just speaking oodles, just y'all, this community, you hold it up. And that's fixing to skyrocket. That's fixing to be even more, I believe. And in Jesus' name, that glass of invisibility is gone. There is no more of that in Jesus' name. Um, so, I'm just speaking this place is going there's there's going to be more and more people in here do you think you're a retiring pastor in a year <coughs> don't press the brakes yet don't stop um and i know you're retiring from the job and I, you know we talked and you got plans for the church 
That's the accelerator. Because with your heart and with the heart of everybody here, there is going to be such an amount of healing, complete healing, spirit, body, soul. I didn't know why I brought these. I showed them to Pastor yesterday. I made them. At the last minute before I left home, I threw them in the car. They sit down in my studio and they just been sitting there. And then all of a sudden, before, right before I left, I run down to my studio and grab these. This morning, the Lord told me to give these to y'all because this will serve as a reminder that when people walk through these doors, they don't won't need any crutches anymore, both literally and figuratively. Addictions are going to just fall off of people. And I, this is more of a prophetic word today, <laughs> which I don't often preach prophetically. That's, you know, most time I'm teaching healing. But in each one of you, the Lord's brought you to such a time for this. And that is absolute truth where we speak blessings over this entire area and any word curses, because honestly, it doesn't take a, a witch to word curse. Most of the time, we do it to ourselves, even as believers. But there was this word curse that now is freedom. Now, I'm going to ask, of course, I'm going to say I just felt a release. Do y'all feel a release? And, um, Pastor, you do with these as you wish. Just display them somewhere. And that's, a, that. like I said, I feel it's a reminder people would not need them. They will walk through these doors. Glenn, who I know, Praise for people as well. I see a lot of people change me and broken. Now on Sundays, we're huge about this is the day the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. This is kind of my little pet peeve because we're not talking about this day. That's actually talking about that day, which was the day of the resurrection. It is because of that day when the stone that was rejected became the cornerstone that we have today. Now, it's because of today that we have freedom and that chains get broken. An atheist accepts Jesus. An atheist turns his life over to Jesus, and Jesus changes him. And so our fasting in the New Testament, which is what we're in, is breaking chains and seeing the poor fed and seeing these changes in life, more and more atheists being changed. Why? Because of the love of Christ in each one of you. And part of that, there's a lot of people that preach that God forsook his son at the cross. That's wrong. He did not. That's some of the things that create atheists, is when we teach that the perfect son 
that was obedient, Jesus said, I'm the father of one. So then God is going to forsake him at the cross? When I was an atheist and I heard the wrath of God was poured out onto Christ at the cross, I ain't serving no God like that. And so that's why it's kind of my pet peeve. Because that's one thing that kept me away from Christianity, including the judge the judgmentalism of some people is just because we believe in Christ, we think we're better, which y'all don't. Y'all are awesome. Um, <laughs> but God did not pour his wrath out on his son. Jesus said that if I be raised up, then I draw all to me. What he was talking about is when he was raised up on the cross, he drew all sin to himself, and it was not punishment coming from God. It was him laying his life down, becoming a vessel, because in order to take a germ or anything hazardous, what do you have to do? You have to contain it in a pure vessel. 